Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is a brand new um, series on the channel. Now, just before I get into explaining this, I never normally say this, but please uh, subscribe and um, like the video um, because it, it means a lot to to see that support um, on, on my videos. It shows that people are engaging and, and actually my videos are, are helping people, which is always nice to see. But this series that I'm about to do is by request of a commenter. So if you are a student out there and you want me to cover a particular topic, then please let me know in the comments below because this was something that uh, one of you out there requested um, and I've put it on my to-do list and now this is the video on matrices. So what I'm going to do in this video, unlike my normal videos where I usually go through paper explanations and I talk through exam questions, this is going to be more of a revision style lesson thing. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll take it right back to the beginning of matrices. This is mainly targeted at GCC further maths, but it could apply in other contexts depending on your level of study. But we're going to take it all the way back to this first part, which is what is a matrix. And then we're going to sort of build on from there, talk about operations with matrices, multiplying matrices, and then uh, matrix transformations, which are all in the, the GCC further maths. So hopefully you like this style of video. And like I said, if there's any requests, then please let me know. So first of all, then, what is a matrix in this first part? Well, a matrix is just an array of numbers. Basically, it's just an arrangement of numbers. Now, computers usually use matrices for information, right? They usually use um, like a matrix format to, to compact a large amount of information. Now, one thing that we do have to know, and that is dimensions of a matrix. Now, the dimensions of a matrix are n times m, well, we say m, n by m in this case, uh, where n is the number of rows and n is the number of columns. So, for example, in this first matrix here, rows go across and columns go down. So this would be a two by one matrix, right? Because there are two rows and just one column of numbers. This one would be a three by three. This one here would be a two by two. So I'm just going to give you 10 seconds now. What are the two um, dimensions for these two matrices here? Now, um, you might have obviously worked out that there's going to be two rows. and There's four columns. So this is a two by four matrix. And this is one row, four columns. So this is a one by four matrix like that. Now, matrices are usually, usually donated by a bold capital letter, right? So, for example, that would be the matrix A. Now, this is very common at, at degree level maths, right? When you talk about matrices and and matrices are a huge part of degree level maths, especially in the first few years, um, when you're sort of learning the basics of very abstract algebra. Um, but this notation is very common at a high level, using bold uh, letters. Now, obviously, to do a bold letter handwritten is quite difficult, so there have been uh, some other cases where some other mathematicians use a different notation if it's been handwritten, but usually if it's been printed like this, it will be a bold capital letter. Now, the numbers in the matrix are called elements. Like I said, these are just numbers, information usually compacted into this arrangement. Now, there are a couple of other things that we need to know about matrices. Now, if we look at this one here, this one is unique, right? It was a three by three matrix. If the number of rows and the number of columns are the same, right? And in this case, we've got two of them, actually. This is a two by two. Well, we call it a square matrix. So a square matrix... And you'll see a lot of square matrices in uh, GCC further maths because two by two is a very common. But a square matrix is when the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. So, for example, we've got a, a what you can have a one by one, which is just a number. Uh, you can have a two by two. You can have a three by three, and so on. Right? Those are, those are all square matrices. There are a couple of other important matrices that we need to know. So I'm just going to sort of put a new page in here. And I'm just going to write some, some stuff in. So 
need to know. So obviously we have our square matrices that I've just talked about, but I'm not going to rewrite um, the uh, definition of that, of what a square matrix is. By the way, matrices is plural for matrix, if that wasn't already uh, made clear. We've also got something called the zero matrix. Now, the zero matrix is quite rare at GCC Further Maths, but definitely common at a high level. Um, the zero matrix is basically where every element, remember we call numbers in a matrix elements, every element is zero, right? So, e.g., the zero matrix for a three by three, so three by three uh, zero matrix, would look something like this. It would be uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Would you have thought it, right? So every element is 0 um, for, a, for a 0 matrix. Now, what else could we... Um, what, what other pieces of information do we need to know? Well, one other extra thing we need to know, and this is very important for GCC Further Maths, is something called the identity matrix. So the identity matrix and I would um, I would get these on like little flashcards I used to when I was studying for GCC further maths I used to have flashcards for basically everything um, so when you what you need to do is you just need to write like identity matrix um, on one side and then on the other side put what an identity matrix is now an identity matrix is when uh, you have uh, elements of one down the leading diagonal. I'll explain what this means in a second. And zero for every other element. So an identity matrix then is, if I scroll down a little bit, so for example the 2 by 2 identity matrix, now we usually don't uh, denote, sorry, the identity matrix with the capital I, bold, capital I. Um, the 2 by 2 identity matrix looks like this, it's 1, 0, 0, 1. So you have uh, what we call uh, the leading diagonal so this is the leading diagonal here going across the matrix there's ones in these uh, across the leading diagonal and then zeros in every other in every other box so for example the 3 by 3 identity matrix is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 right because it is uh, ones down this leading diagonal and then zeros in every other every other uh, position and that would be the 3 by 3 this is the one you need to know for GCC further maths the 2 by 2 identity matrix 1 0 0 1 a very very useful matrix and we'll talk more about it when we do like operations and we do uh, transformations as well because the identity matrix has a very specific transformation and I don't want to spoil it right now um, but its transformation is very unique um, in, in how it works so absolutely something that we need to know and again I would I would sort of flashcard that up just so we don't forget that piece of information. Now you might notice just on a side note, just before we sort of get on to the introducing things about like how matrices um, add together and things like that, you might notice that how I write my uh, matrices, I use square brackets. Now let me just add in a new page. There are sort of a few mindsets about matrices. Some people like to do curly brackets some people like to do uh, square brackets and some people like to do like really fancy uh, brackets now personally technically it's, it's personal preference I don't really feel like there's a convention right it all depends on how you were sort of brought up in your mathematical studies I always use these sort of curvy brackets for vectors so usually like I would write the vector 1, 2 in, in sort of curvy brackets, is how I like to call them. Um, but square brackets I use for matrices. So whether it be a 2 by 2 
or a 3x3 three three or a 4x4. Four four. I, I use square brackets for matrices. These curvy brackets, or I call them fancy brackets, um, I usually use fancy brackets for sets which is a completely different thing in mathematics. So like uh, when you get to A level, A level students will know a lot about sets, but like the set of everything that is X, but X has to be greater than or equal to three. That's when you use curvy brackets. Curvy brackets are definitely for sets, in my opinion. But um, between curvy and um, uh, square brackets, I don't really feel like there's a, a definite answer to which is the right one. I've just always used uh, these square brackets for matrices and, and curvy brackets for, for vectors, but that's just personal preference. So it's however you want to write it is what I'm trying to say. Okay, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to leave it there for this part because I've just explained the very basics of what a matrix is. So a matrix, as just a reminder, it's just a collection of elements, we call these numbers, arranged in a either square or rectangular formation with brackets going around. Now, obviously these have curved brackets on, right, for these, uh, on these slides, but um, personally I use uh, square ones, and that doesn't, you know, not necessarily the be all and end all. We, we need to know what a square matrix is. So remember, a square matrix is when the number of rows equals the number of columns, so one by one, two by two, three by three, and so on. We need to know the zero matrix, although not very common, and then the identity matrix, absolutely essential for um, for um, GCSE further maths, we need to know what the identity matrix is. Uh, we're leading diagonals down the one, and we're going to talk about it in the next part and the subsequent parts about why the identity matrix is so special. And we also need to remember that the the way we write the dimensions of the matrix is always the number of rows first, then the number of columns, which is kind of counterintuitive because you would think it's like a cross then down because like coordinates is always across then up or down but it's actually how many rows how many go across by how many columns so just make sure we really remember that idea so in the next part then we're going to look at things like these now again i'm not hating on the curvy brackets but i would use square brackets um we're going to have a look at adding and subtracting matrices we're going to have a look at when you multiply a matrix by a, a whole number a, what we call a scalar multiple and then we're going to even look at when you multiply matrices together like this. So that's what we're going to have a look at in the next part, so operations and matrices. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been something that's been a little bit different for you. Something that, um, I'll leave, put it on this title page. Something that's um, hopefully a different format that is more uh, sort of appealing to the, uh, to the sort of revision side of things, but also maybe just a recap on a lesson that you've done recently. You might have learned about matrices in a lesson you think, I didn't really quite get it. That's that's maths, right? There's been times where I've walked into a, uh, many, many times I've walked into a lesson or a university lecture. I sat down for two hours, walked out and gone, I have absolutely no idea what that lecture was on about. And it, you know, it, it taking hours upon hours of study to try and get it to sink in because it just, it just, wouldn't at the time and and that's math sometimes it does take a long time but hopefully this video will have sort of rejogged the memory a little bit for for some of you out there but join me in the next part and all i want to say is thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day